As dangerous threats to America's safety increase with each passing day, so does the need to combat any potential enemy. For almost 20 years, a leading defense enterprise has been developing a prototype of a gunpowderless weapon, the General Atomics Electromagnetic Railgun. In a joint effort with the United States Navy, the device features electromagnetic launchers that use electric power instead of chemical propellants. This way, the Blitzer could fire projectiles at speeds never before seen in conventional weapons. Despite its uncertain future and the potential involvement of the United States Army, these revolutionary railguns might just change the way America fights. No more gunpowder. For centuries, the armies and navies of the world have fired their artillery by igniting their weapons with chemical propellants, like gunpowder. When launched from the gun, these substances cause an expansion of gases that propel the shells toward their target. Although the gray powder has been the propellant of choice for a long time, the substance has several limitations, such as the need to be carried within the projectile and making the round heavier, or its difficulty to be handled and transported because of its flammability, as well as a limited projectile velocity of up to 4,000 feet per second. However, the United States may soon overcome these challenges with railguns, a powerful new weapon in research and development since the early 21st century. The General Atomics Electromagnetic Systems Group, or GAEMS, has been hard at work for almost 20 years developing a weapon of the future, the Blitzer Electromagnetic Railgun. This railgun switches out gunpowder for an electromagnetic field powered by electricity to launch its projectiles at hypersonic speeds, or up to 52,493 feet per second. While current Navy guns have a maximum range of 12 miles, Electromagnetic railguns could hit a target up to 250 miles away in only six minutes. Benefits The benefits of the railgun are tremendous. Railgun projectiles are non-explosive and safer to create, transport, and store. Eliminating gunpowder altogether would also eliminate the hazard of explosive shells that could be detonated by enemy hits, friendly fire, or even human error. And because the shell would not need any explosive charge, the projectile's extreme speed on impact would be enough to inflict damage to a target. Capable of launching projectiles at a top speed of Mach 5, the railgun systems are planned for multiple roles aboard Navy ships, as well as land-based fixtures and even mobile tactical weapons aboard vehicles. The weapon would blow holes in enemy ships, destroy tanks, and level terrorist camps, knocking enemy missiles out faster and cheaper than current American missile defense systems. And thanks to its rapid firing rate, the Blitzer components would also be able to engage multiple targets at once. In a statement to the Wall Street Journal, U.S. Navy Admiral Matt Winter, head of the Office of Naval Research, said that the Blitzer would change the way the United States fights in wars. The weapon has been in development for years, and half a billion dollars have been spent on it already. Still, in 2016, the Pentagon's Strategic Capabilities Office announced the investment of another $800 million to develop the weapon's defensive ability and to adapt existing guns to fire the railgun's high-tech gunpowderless projectiles. In addition, one of the weapon's chief enthusiasts and boosters, then Deputy Secretary of Defense Robert Work, praised the railgun's potential and value. The Navy's Railgun. After the new investment announcement, General Atomics has made substantial progress while testing the weapon, with some of the trials even caught on camera. The first test of the Blitzer Railgun prototype actually happened in October of 2009 in San Diego, California, when the General Atomics Electromagnetic Systems Division successfully shot multiple rounds. Research and testing under their contract with the Office of Naval Research continued throughout the decade on many occasions. Still, after almost 16 years of research and development, the U.S. Navy surprised the industry by not requesting any more funding for the project in 2021. As such, rumors that the electromagnetic railgun program had been shut down quickly began spreading. 
After so much money spent in the weapons research, capable of slinging projectiles at mock speeds without gunpowder, the Navy cut ties with the program without having sent a single device to sea. It is believed that the railgun fell victim to structural changes within the Navy, as the organization has put its sights towards much faster, longer-range weapons capable of striking ships and land targets from a safe distance. One example is the Navy's common hypersonic glide body, with a top speed of Mach 17 and a range of over 1,500 miles. Also in 2021, China shocked the world when the People's Liberation Army Navy announced that they had successfully integrated and tested their own version of a railgun aboard a ship. According to the official press release, after hundreds of failures and over 50,000 tests, the team, led by Rear Admiral Ma Weiming, successfully developed the largest repeating power supply system in the world. The announcement also highlighted the contributions of Zhang Xiao, an assistant research fellow at the PLA Naval University of Engineering, who was a crucial figure in the nation's research of electromagnetic launching technology. A Glimmer of Hope In 2016, during the United States Army's annual Maneuver and Fires Integration Experiment, the Blitzer performed 11 successful test firings. The projectiles used in the trial contained a guidance electronics unit that indicated the shells achieved an acceleration of over 30,000 gravities. In an official statement, GAEMS Missile Defense and Space Systems Vice President Nick Bucci said, quote, we're continuing to test at an impressive pace, building on the successes over the past year to advance both our blister railgun systems and hypersonic projectile capabilities. Then, in 2018, the U.S. Army awarded a three-year contract to General Atomics Electromagnetic Systems to evaluate, advance, and test the electromagnetic railgun weapon system technology. The objective is to move General Atomics' scalable railgun concept into a semi-operational state, integrating the system into a mobile, truck-based platform. The contract, awarded by the Department of Defense Ordnance Technology Consortium, will help support the Army's Armament Research, Development, and Engineering Command. Under the three-year deal, General Atomics was to collaborate with the Army to upgrade their prototype and modify it for the organization's needs, testing for mission effectiveness and possible integration with existing and future vehicles. While the potential of the railgun with Navy vessels is clear, the Army has just as much of a need for this technology. An electromagnetic railgun would give the Army's artillery units the ability to deliver hard-hitting attacks with over double the range of existing multiple-launch guided rockets. Railgun technology would also have much deeper magazine depth and the ability to provide more continuous fire support, performing the missions in all weather conditions and in more cost-effective ways. In 2021, General Atomics announced that the company had made significant advances in miniaturizing the infrastructure needed to generate and distribute the pulsed power required to launch the weapons-guided projectiles at hypersonic speeds so it could fit into smaller vehicles. While it seems like the Army might make railguns a reality in the not-so-distant future, not much more is known about the three-year deal and its development. According to Nick Bucci, quote, we are looking forward to verifying the projectile's capability to sustain data links, control its trajectory via actuated control surfaces using command guidance, and hit moving airborne targets, all while undergoing incredible G-forces and at hypersonic speeds. For the future battle space, this will mean greater precision and accuracy to meet and defeat airborne threats. With an uncertain future, this technological breakthrough's full potential is still yet to be seen. Thank you for watching our dark tech video. If you liked it, please give us a like and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this and all the other channels in the Dark Documentaries family for more military technology and history from across the globe.